Hello community. Medical AI systems are really crucial for the future of AI, especially if hospitals cut down on cost and want to make more profit. So what can we achieve if we invest, let's say, $100 here for the rent-out computer infrastructure? What can we achieve in performance jump for medical AI systems? And we have a new study by Washington University, University of North Carolina, George Mason University, Yale University and Rice University, particularly on the topic of Maria improvements. So let's open up this video and you will see it is rather simple. So first we notice that there is a difference in the medical LLM benchmark systems that we use because they are either from medical examination or research articles and they are more or less framed here as multiple choice. Yeah, I don't have to tell you that there is a difference to the real-world complexity in medical AI in a clinical environment, let's say here as described by the Johns Hopkins University, for the actual diagnostic procedures. So our benchmarks do not fit the real-world tests. So therefore, we have to understand where does it fail. We have to improve the reasoning that is required in the real-world clinical scenarios we have to have a look at the diagnostic reasoning progress from the patient history review to the complete analytic of the clinical findings and the test result and the diagnostic conclusion and everything because we want to come close to the real-world diagnostic scenario. So imagine if I enter now a hospital and, you know, this is the team that greets me here in Austria, you know, healthcare is free, and so they tell me, hey, what are your symptoms? Can you use here some medical terms? And yes, you can use here the technical terms in Latin, of course, because I have four years Latin in my gymnasium. And now on the other side, it's me and I tell them, <laughs> you know, it hurts here. So great. You see, we do have a problem. We do have a problem in the communication. And the big hope is we have an AI system as kind of a translator here between a simple human patient and the team of experts. Now, of course, the doctors can do this, but you know, sometimes doctors are not really specialized for this dialogue-based conversation with the patient. Do you remember the TV series Dr. House, MD? So, short outlook would be great if I'm somewhere in the Australian desert or in the bush or somewhere hopping with the kangaroos and I'm a thousand miles away from any human medical doctor to have then a medical AI system wherever you are in the world. But please, of course, be careful, because an AI system that was not trained on a dialogue, on a dialogue with a non-expert human, we call this a patient, we encounter significant problems. So we are looking for a solution today in this video. And there is a simple idea by these five universities. We have to optimize our medical data, the training data, the quality of the training data for a dialogue-based medical AI training scenarios. And with this spark of genius, we continue and we need now two things. We need to optimize now the med AI training data for our LNMs, and then we need a new med AI benchmark for testing here the performance of our med AI systems. So let's look at both of them. Training data, we have to optimize the open source training data that we have available and we get a better benchmark, a more complex benchmark that is really closer to the clinical diagnostic systems. So, first idea here of the five university, a new benchmark. Let's do it in the simplest way. No? Phase one is a round, round ranking task that requires here the LLM to rank all evidence. And then we have a multi-round ranking where we go step by step and gradually construct here the necessary context here for the decision-making of our MET AI LLM. Plus, careful, we need a lot of local medical data, because it depends where you are. If you are hiking in a rainforest, it is so completely different if you are hiking here in my home country in the Austrian Alps. And believe me, even in the Austrian Alps, there's a difference of the bone fractures, how you bone fractures, if you are skiing, uh, ice, waterfall, climbing, or skating. So, local context matters. So, let's come to the core idea that we want to implement now. They are all the raw clinical reports on everything that is in articles or in peer-reviewed papers. And then we have all these open source, multiple choice Q&A from different tests or whatever, exams. 
now we have to transfer this into a dialog tuning data set. Now, in the good old times, you know, you would say, okay, let's uh, make this here for 1,000 humans, that they should help us here to rewrite here the complete data set. But of course, in 2025, you take here, no, they decided to take a LAMA 3.18B LLM to do this sensitive data set conversion. Plus, I told you we need also a new benchmark that we can check if there's really an improvement, if this does, does it work at all. So our classical Q&A benchmark, you know, we have here multiple choice. So you got a background information, you got a query, what is your diagnosis? And then you have option A to D. And then here in the simplest case, softmax, we have here option C. Unfortunately, we have to go in and then get more information. Hey, what is the next base? next best option? What is the probability for the next best option? How far away are the rankings? And, and, and. But never mind, they developed here a complete new benchmark, Muddy Maze, an evidence-based medical decision-making benchmark. And this is a quite simple but quite nice system, because they say, you know what, in the one round evidence ranking, we provide piece by piece more and more evidence here to the medical AI system to train on. So they have here in the one round evidence ranking, the model is required to identify the correct evidence and output it in order, in the correct sequence, in the reordered sequence. And then we enter here a multi-round evidence ranking. And again, update the current information with each selection, iterating via several rounds to reach here the final decision by the MedAI system. If you want to see this here in Upsider code real nice, it's really plain and simple. You have your background information and then you choose here a single sentence index and you update here the prompt with the single sentence index and this is all there is. So if you want to see this here more explicit in the written form, the one round evidence ranking here, we have a pool of evidence sentences from the patient, from the human patient, and then the objective is to determine the correct sequential order in which this evidence should be added to the background information to our medical AI system. And the medical AI system is now challenged with building here a complete and complex reasoning chain in a single step and to reason holistically. But you remember, this is not enough because if we have here a configuration, let's say we are here in a dot system, you can go from this step to this step, and then this symptom would allow here an explanation of all these different other symptoms, and then those would diverge into a cascading effect of what would be theoretically possible. Or if you do it in a clever way, you find a sequence here of your symptoms that are only have a limited amount of possibilities. So the clever way to sort this and build this up, the sequence up, is now what we want to achieve. So you see two different approaches to the system. And in the multi-round evidence ranking, this is exactly what we do. We have a one piece of evidence, background is updated, and we want to narrow down here the range of the diagnostic hypothesis until the whole chain of reasoning is established. And you say, wait a minute, this whole chain of reasoning. And yes, in my last video, we were talking about this almost identical topic with R1 and O1 models undersinking complex reasoning. You remember, we said if you do not correct for this, our O1 and R1 models, they go here into the one option, two options, three options, four options, and so on, and they fail to go in the reasoning for a deep reasoning exercise till they reach the correct solution. They are looking here in the shallow reasoning solution pool, and if there's none, they are just wasting their time and their energy and their money here on irregular solutions that do not exist. So finding here the right complexity to solve is almost the same topic in my last videos. And if you look at my third three last videos, yes, it is focusing here on the same topic. This is what we are currently investigating in AI research. Let's come to the facts. We have here a beautiful paper from the end of January 2025 instructing here medical LLMs via strategical conversation from our five universities. And they did some beautiful in the, in the dialogue fine-tuning. However, and this is 
I'll have to say. They decided to go here to investigate here a 3B model and an 8B model for a complex clinical AI research task. Now, okay, what they found is that maybe an 8B model is a little bit better than a 3B model. Okay, what a surprise. But if you think about this, and I don't know the first three university, but I know Yale University and I know Rice University, and I think they could afford to spend a little bit of money to go with a bigger LLM, invest a little bit more in renting out here GPUs. But unfortunately, they decided to go only with a 3B or an 8B Llama 3.1 model. Okay, let's look where are those models? How good are those models here? I'm already in February of 2025 and you see the Llama 3B already the instruction fine-tuned model is at rank 98. So it hardly makes it into the top 100 LLM. And if you look here at the 8B, also there is the, the big brother, the instruction model here is on rank 68. So we were, or the authors or the five university work here with models that I have to say are really really not the optimal LLMs for some complex medical data transformation. Plus, if you look now at the prompt complexity, and look, this here is prompt one. This is from original Annex 1 of the study. Here you find it. And this is the prompt to convert here from a multiple choice Q&A to the dialogue. If you know a little bit about prompt engineering, you see okay, this is a nice prompt, but maybe it is not the highest performant prompt. The same is true if you go for the research article to the dialogue conversation. If this is all the prompt information that you provide to a LAMA model, maybe you can optimize this. Because what's happened? Look, we have here our classical medical data set in Q&A or multi-question multi and answer, whatever. And then we take here a 3B or an 8B model and we convert here 10,000, 20,000 medical data set into dialogue-based data set. Now, the dialogue between two humans, a doctor and a patient, is, with all the medical terms, not an easy endeavor. So, to go here with a 3B model, I know it's cheaper, but maybe this is not, given the complexity of the human dialogue, in medical terms, maybe this is not really the best model you can choose. Because then if we have this new data set, you know exactly what we do. We supervise or we fine-tune in this LLM exactly on this dialogue-based data set. So our LAMA 3B or 8B become now a advanced, supervised, fine-tuned LLM that we then can have here the new benchmark. And if we do this, we see that in the easiest case, we have a 10% performance increase. And this is interesting, because if you go to higher complexity, you see that the increase comes down to about 2%. This is a typical indicator that the model is not up to the job. And honestly, if you think about such a complex medical task, a 3B or an 8B model, yeah. So there's an indication that maybe the prompt complexity and the data conversion LLM could be improved. So <laughs> if I can give one recommendation, use a better AI system. And I mean this for three particular steps, because look, you can update here the complexity of your prompt, simply go to Stanford, DSPI, beautiful, or go, oh, text grad, sorry, there's no R, text grad, I have a video on DSPI, I have a video on text grad, or just go with an R1 model, you know? And then switch, please, from a 3B model for the data set conversion, for the complexity of human dialogue in medical terms. Don't use a 3B model to do the conversion. Use here, let's say, an R1 or an O1 or whatever you like. And finally, if we have the data, the new data set, and we start the fine-tuning, go with a little bit higher LLM, like a 32B model or a 70B LLM, and then if you need us a real tiny small language model, distill it down. But for the causal reasoning complexity, we know 
even if we only do here a training time optimization, it helps if the model is a little bit bigger and then you can have a beautiful distillation process down to a 3B and don't go and fine tune directly a 3B model. You lose performance. So show you that it works. I said, hey, I just do a quick and dirty. I do a test. So I said, hey, R1, deep think R1. Can you analyze here the prompt templates and build a better prompt template? And give me all the information, R1 came back and built a much better multiple choice Q&A to dialogue prompt structure. No DS by this was just one question to optimize here, the prompt in its entity. And if you go for research articles to dialogue, R1, I think 25 seconds later, give me a better prompt. So we use here 671 billion free trainable Parameter model, a mixture of expert system. I know it's a little bit more expensive than a 3B, but you know, R1 is open source. You can run this locally on your, if you want, US uh, university servers. You don't have to transfer this across any borders. You can run this locally and it gives you better results on A, B and C. So beautiful idea, but in the hardware configuration and the model selection, I think you lose performance if you go with these models. So let's come to an end. The authors investigated three different questions and now they provide us with their answer. So the first question was, hey, what is the effect of the dialogue tuning here on the reasoning compared to the other forms? And the result that the authors tell us, hey, it improves the reasoning across the board from basic advanced and challenging levels. Second, does combining here the dialogue data sets improve the reasoning? Yes, it outperforms every other choice. And third, can a dialogue tune model also handle noise? Can we insert irrelevant information in this doctor-patient conversation that is not relevant for a diagnostic system? Yes, and the system still performs well. Also, if we have a heavy noise interference here in the simulation of the human conversation. So I call this a 100 buck here Met EI improvement. I think it is impressive that the beauty of the idea works out even if you use such a tiny underperforming model. But it brings us here some results. But you know, I thought, hey, if those five universities, Yale and Rice here, would invest a little bit more money, you know, just a tiny bit. Imagine you would spend here $1,000 to rent out GPUs. If these are your costs, you have the personal cost in the university. So we just talk here about hardware rent out costs. If you would just invest, let's say, up to $1,000, US I think you would make a significant jump given my simple tests that I performed because I used this R1 optimized prompts. I used it on your data set that you used. And I'm not a medical expert, but I can tell you from my feeling, they produced much better medical conversation between a patient and its doctor. So therefore, I think this is so easy to improve if you use a better model to generate this more complex conversational data set. So beautiful idea, maybe not the perfect hardware implementation, but never mind, it is the idea that is, that's count. And if you enjoyed this video, if you had a little bit of fun, or maybe you got a new idea, hey, why not subscribe? And you will be surprised. The topic of my next video.